Welcome to the Expansive CEO Podcast. I'm your host, Hannah Chapman, founder of Expansive CEO and X Squared Wealth Planning. Buckle in as we explore how to create true prosperity and build a business and a life that expands beyond yourself and makes a dent in the universe. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of the Expansive CEO Podcast. Uh, Brad Haynes is usually here with me for Investment Friday, but he's feeling under the weather, so we're going to send him lots of good vibes and uh, make sure he is all happy and cheery and bright-eyed, bushy-tailed next week for Investment Friday. And so today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about retirement plan options for small business owners. And what's hilarious is that I just started recording and I probably recorded for like 15 minutes about SEP IRAs and simple IRAs. And I started boring myself. So (laughs) I was like, you know what? I feel bored talking about this. Um, So I don't want to uh, continue with that and also bore my audience. So I would love to instead talk about why it's important for business owners to choose something that's a benefit. If you have employees, the importance of having some sort of benefit for your employees, because as even as I was recording, um, you know, about the SEP IRA and about the simple IRA and solo 401k, all of that. The thing that was really most interesting and important to me is making sure that we are creating environments where we are fully supporting ourselves and where if we have employees, we are also creating an environment where they can thrive as well. And we're really, really seeing this in the job market as like right now across the board, So if we want to, you know, get into an investment Friday topic, we can talk about how jobs are still, you know, there's still one, I think it's about 1.5 open jobs for every unemployed person that's on unemployment rolls right now. So that means for anyone who's unemployed, there's one and a half jobs out there that they could potentially get. And so when we have that really tight labor market, We as employers are then competing, basically. We're competing for talent and we're competing to, you know, be a space where people want to work. And as you're growing, if you're in this phase where you've got more work coming in than you can do, maybe you are rocking at your sales right now and things are really booming And you need another employee to take some of this um, beautiful stress of growth, right? Like this is good. This is good stress that you're under um, as you're growing, but you do need someone to come in and take some of that off your plate. How do we do that? How do you attract the right talent that will want to work with you? Because one thing that I tell my clients, you know, when when hiring issues arise, which they inevitably do, right? I've had many, many clients who have gone through, you know, different employees and felt just like visceral, you know, frustration and really going through, um, yeah, just uh, like it feels really tough to go through employee issues and to be like, ah, why can't I just get someone good? Why can't I find good employees and, and keep them? And, you know, there's yeah, just that feeling of frustration that you can really get into. And this is not to say that they've done anything wrong, but, um, what I do notice is that when we put different benefits in place, it can be really helpful in recruiting high quality employees and make those benefits accessible to the, to your new employees as well. So 
there is a lot more that we could say about that as well. But I, I just want to give this one, you know, one really tangible tip so that, you know, when you're thinking about what benefits do I, you know, do I want as the employer, what do I want to be able to um, avail myself of as a business business owner? And what will also be a helpful thing to attract employees to my business as well? One of those things is retirement benefits. And even if people have all kinds of different views and ideas about retirement now, the fact remains that, you know, knowing that someone is going to not just pay you a salary that feels nourishing, that feels like, hey, like when I work full time, I can actually provide for my family. You know, that those are things that we need to be able to provide as well. But then to know that you're also going to kick in and contribute to my retirement plan, like that feels really good as an employee. And what's funny is that a lot of employees won't even take advantage of the retirement plan necessarily. So you won't even be having to lay out money for if you pick something that has a matching contribution. They may not even fully utilize that benefit, but the fact that it's there that they know that they can use it is still psychologically like, okay, I I feel like this employer cares. And to be clear, you know, most of the clients that I work with, they do really care. I would say all the clients that I work with, they do really care about their employees and they do really want to provide um, a a safe and um, prosperous working space for their employees. They want to pay their employees well. They want to give them, you know, what they need so that when they work, they can, they can provide for their families. Right. So what are the options that are most suited if you have employees and you want to start thinking about benefits, or if you are, say you're planning to bring on employees in the next year or so, and you want to again, like plan ahead to be able to provide benefits. Some of the better options that you have as an employer that will give you the ability for yourself, for you to start putting some money away for um, either for retirement or even just as a tax advantaged play so that you can get some more money out of your taxable income, pay less in taxes each year. Uh, Those are going to be your simple IRA the simple IRA is one where you can you can give an employee match of up to 3%. So that means your employee has to contribute as well. But when they do contribute, you will match up to 3% of their salary. So let's say one of your employees makes, um, I'll say, $70,000 a year. And they want to contribute $500 per month to a simple IRA. So they're contributing $500, but 3% of their salary is $175. So while they're contributing $500, you're going to contribute $175 into their simple IRA for you know their future retirement. So from that perspective, it is an additional expense on your balance sheet as a business owner, but it's not the kind of eye popping, like sticker shock number that people can sometimes be worried about. That's the thing that I noticed the most is that when we, when I talk to my business owner clients about simple IRAs, um, they are typically like nervous at first to, to know, okay, how much is this going to cost me if my employees all take advantage? And Typically, it's not more than if you have maybe several employees, it might be a few hundred dollars per month. It's not going to be, you know, something that's going to cost you many, many thousands of dollars every month unless you have a large group of highly paid employees. Okay. The thing that it also allows you to do as the business owner is, you know, save for yourself and also match yourself 
that 3%. So you're going to be able to save as much as, as much as you want up to the max, um, which for a simple IRA in 2023 is 15,500. That's the maximum amount you can put in. And then you can match yourself up to 3% as well. So that's one really, really good option. The other option that works really well if you have employees um, is a 401k. And you can have a 401k even if you're a small employer, right? A small employer being, you know, 10 or less employees, right? It just depends on what you as the business owner really want to be able to save for yourself and the benefit level that you want to be able to provide for your employees. So I have been really uh, surprised lately. There have been more providers coming online that are providing 401k, like full-fledged 401ks um, at really reasonable administration costs. That's been the main issue with 401ks for a long time is that unless you're a large employer and you have, you know, a good amount of money that you can put towards what's called third-party administrators, uh, you know, someone to administer the 401k to do all of the required testing to make sure it's fair across the board. There's a lot of, you know, regulations and requirements that go into having a 401k, but like I was just mentioning, I have noticed some more offerings coming online recently that make creating a 401k for your business much easier. Um, I do not have any direct experience with them, nor um, nor can I make a recommendation for where you should, should search for one of these types of accounts. But just know that if it's something that you're interested in, providing to your employees, it does exist. And I would really, really encourage you to talk to your financial advisor um, or talk to your, um, maybe your accountant. Accountants don't usually talk about employee benefits. That's not really their, um, their space. But yeah, if you have a financial advisor that you can talk to, um, I would really highly encourage you to and you're interested in it, I would encourage you to do that. If you don't have a financial advisor and you're a business owner and you would like to talk to someone, I can raise my hand and say, you can talk to me about that as well. I would love to hear from you and we can talk about some of your options. But the 401k actually has a much higher contribution limit. And for that one, let's say you do have employees that you're paying, you know, 70 to $100,000 a year or more. Um, and they want to be able to put away that higher limit. The 401k, if you're under age 50, you can put in up to 20,500 per year. That's in 2023. So it is a higher limit than the simple IRA by about $5,000, right? Um, if you're under age 50 and you can have different options of how you as the employer then contribute to those accounts as well. So again, you can match, you have more flexibility in the kind of match that you can do. Um, you can do higher matching amounts if you'd like, you know, some employers will do four and a half or even 5% um, based on how the employee contributes. And um, you can also choose to do what are called safe harbor contributions or you can choose to do profit sharing contributions. So all of these different options that are on the table of how do we provide more benefit to our employees that we really appreciate and want we want to support and we want them to feel like they are valued members of the team because they are, and we want them to stay, all of those things, right? This is one of the ways that we can do that where it's not, a, again, it's not a huge strain on the balance sheet, but it does make a really big difference to employees. Um, so I would really, really encourage you to think about that and think about the options that are available to you um, if you are an employer with employees. And if you have been listening and you're like, okay, I don't have employees, 
what are the right options for me? Um, that is, there, there are actually more uh, options for you as a solo that make sense um, as well. So if you're a solo business owner and it's just you, or maybe it's just you and one partner, um, in the business, maybe you and your spouse works with you and helps you in the business. Um, those configurations, you have the option of using a SEP IRA, SEP IRA, um, which is really only the right option if you're in that category. Like you are truly a solo uh, employer, solo uh, entrepreneur. Or um, if you have a partner and you both want to contribute from your company's profits. So the the issue with the SEP IRA is that if you, like say you as the owner, want to contribute 25% of your eligible pay, which is the max that you can contribute, if you do 25% of your eligible pay, you have to do 25% of everybody's eligible pay and only the employer contributes. So that's why if you have a, like W-2 employees, that's not a good option usually for most people because they don't they don't quite have it in the balance sheet to give another 25% to their employees for re their retirement account contributions. Um, but if you're solo or if you're, you know, you have a partner and you both want to do 25% into a SEP IRA, easy, super easy for that type of account to be utilized. It's a great option. Um, for that configuration. You also, as a solo, if it's just you or just you and your spouse, that's the other configuration that can work. So your spouse works for you um, in the business. You can have what's called a solo 401k. And this is actually even easier to administer than the regular 401k that I was talking about before. The solo 401k can be set up at most, most financial institutions. Um, and contributed to pretty easily. And you have all those same options, the higher limits that you can contribute. Um, you could go all the way up to $66,000 if you are under age 50 um, with a few different configurations of how you put money in. But overall, you know, the solo 401k, if you want to be able to put away bigger amounts of money per year, that can be a really, really good option if you are a solo entrepreneur. Uh, and then, of course, our kind of more normal um, retirement accounts of the traditional IRA and the Roth IRA are also there. Uh, and we've got plenty of other options like the cash balance plans, um, money purchase plans, uh, employer stock, ESPP, and employer stock purchase plans um, that can all be really valuable benefits to you as the employer um, and for some of those if you have employees as well. So um, we're not going to go into all the details of all those different types of accounts right now, but I wanted to, because it's October 12th today, we are coming close to the end of the year. We are officially in Q4 and some of these accounts require that you start them in the year 2023 if you want to be able to contribute for 2023. So that would be your 401k accounts. Um, those have to be started in 2023. Uh, the simple IRA deadline, I believe already passed. So I don't think you can start a simple IRA for 2023 anymore. If you started one now, it would be for 2024, just FYI. Um, but the SEP IRA, SEP IRA, if you want to create that, you have all the way up until the tax filing deadline next year to create that and fund it for 2023. So it's always kind of a rush at the end of the year here. If you want to start having conversations about what the right retirement plan option is, I always, I like to, to get this information out there earlier so that people can have those conversations and start to think about, okay, what's the right thing that I want to have in place starting January 1, 2024? right? We need to have those conversations now rather than waiting until, you know, December or waiting until January or February of next year. Um, some of these things, it's, it's really good to like get in place right now. The other aspect of that is that with tax planning, 
right? If you, again, if you are, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur, if you want to be able to do some really good tax planning, you need to start looking at that right now in October, in November, so that you can have the right pieces in place before the end of the year. So again, if you want to contribute to um, a 401k, for example, or if you want to understand, you know, okay, what's my, what's my potential tax burden going to be? Do I need to, you know, bring any uh, expenses into 2023 that I would have paid in 24? Those kinds of things, right? We want to be able to have those conversations now rather than waiting until December 15th and being like, oh, is there anything I can do now? That might be really hard to take care of, or even worse, wait until January, February when you're getting your tax estimates. And then now you have so many fewer options. Like you've just limited your options by a ton if you don't do any tax planning right now. So again, um, if you have a financial advisor, you should absolutely reach out and ask them, is there any tax planning that I should be doing right now that I'm not doing so far? Um, and if you don't have a financial advisor and you've never done proactive tax planning like this before, uh, that would be a really awesome way to interview financial advisors and say, hey, what do you do for tax planning at the end of the year with business owners? How do you how do you make sure that things are going to flow smoothly in the new year? Because I know as a business owner myself and with you know all the clients that I work with, taxes are one of the most stressful and one of the biggest expenses that a lot of us deal with on an annual basis, right? So anything we can do during the year to make tax time flow more easily, flow more smoothly, um, just, yeah, make it an easier process, we can put that stuff in place ahead of time. And then, yeah, enjoy the beginning of the year, enjoy the end of the year, rather than be like, freaking out about our receipts and freaking out about um, what our tax bill is going to be next year. So that is what I'm going to leave you with today. A little bit of a different uh, take on what's going on with the markets and, and the economy this week. And if you have any questions, if anything came up, if you want to hear more about some of these different kinds of accounts, send me a note, send me an email um, about what resonated for you, what questions that brought up. And I am happy, super happy, like ecstatically happy to answer questions um, and, and just, you know, riff on the things that you want to hear about as well. So send me an email. You can either email me at Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H at expansiveceo.com, or you can email me at x squared at Hannah.chapman, C-H-A-P-M-A-N at x the numeral two wealthplanning.com either way it will get to me um, and you can put you know question for the podcast in the subject line and i would love to hear from you so have an awesome week send me your questions and we'll talk to you next week that's it for this episode thanks for listening and be sure to like and subscribe and again if anything resonated with you from this episode i would love to hear from you Email me at Hannah, H-A-N-N-A-H, at expansiveceo.com and tell me about it. And if you're ready for your greatest expansion, you can find ways to work with me at expansiveceo.com and at xsquaredwealthplanning.com. That's X, the numeral two, wealthplanning.com. So until next time, remember that there is enough, you are enough, and your birthright in this lifetime is to be expansive.